So hi, hello everyone. Welcome to Raw Online. This is Dr. Stevenson, your faculty for biochemistry, and today we'll be discussing about compound lipids. Okay. So what are these compound lipids? They are nothing but fatty acids combined to alcohol through ester linkages. Okay. Fatty acid has a COOH group. Alcohol has a OH group. Okay. So these two combine to form what? What kind of a linkage is that? Ester linkage. And to this, some kind of a additional group gets attached. Any kind of an additional group. Okay. This additional group could be a phospholipid or a carbohydrate or a protein, etc. So, with respect to this, you get your name for compound lipids. Okay. So, if the additional group shows the presence of a phosphate, okay, then this is a phospholipid, is a phosphate. Then this is called as a phospholipid. Okay. If the additional group is a carbohydrate, then how do you call this? You call this a glycolipid. If additional group is a carbohydrate, then you call this a glycolipid. Okay. So, the name goes on. Okay. Now, we will see the classification of phospholipids. Okay. So, phospholipids, how do you classify them? You classify them with respect to the central alcohol, which acts as a backbone for these kind of complex lipids. See, the structure of complex lipids is something like this. They have got some central alcohol. To this central alcohol, you have some fatty acyl coase fatty acids which are getting attached to this central alcohol. So, if along with this fatty acid, any kind of a additional group gets attached, this is the additional group, okay. These will be your fatty acids and this is your alcohol. So, this is a complex or a compound lipid. So, this additional group could be a carbohydrate. If this is a carbohydrate, this is called as what? Glycolipid. Okay. If this additional group happens to be a phosphate group, then this is called as a phospholipid. Now, we are going to see the classification of phospholipids. Okay. So, how do you classify phospholipids? With respect to the alcohol which is present as the backbone. Okay. This alcohol could either be a glycerol okay, or it could be sphingosin. If this is a glycerol, okay, then this becomes glycerophospholipid. Okay. If this central alcohol happens to be sphingosin, then this is called as sphingophospholipid. Are you clear guys? So, the classification of phospholipids is based upon the alcohol which is present in the as the backbone. Okay. If this is a glycerol, then this is called as a glycerophospholipid. If the central alcohol is sphingosin, then this is called as sphingophospholipid. Okay. Now, we see various kinds of glycerophospholipids. We will see each one of them by specific classifications. So, glycerophospholipids. So, glycerophospholipids, what they have got? They have got a central glycerol. To this central glycerol, you have got fatty acids. This is fatty acid 1. This is fatty acid 2 which are assigned to each of the carbon atoms there. Okay. To the third part, you attach a phosphate. 
you attach a phosphate at the third position okay so this becomes the basic building block of glycerophospholipid okay this structure which i have drawn here is called as phosphatidic acid this phosphatidic acid will be your building block for all the different kinds of glycerophospholipids you are going to develop so if this phosphate group various kinds of additional groups may come and gets attached so with respect to that we find various kinds of different types of glycerophospholipid so the structure of glycerophospholipid will be something like this so glycerol is a three carbon containing alcohol so to the first carbon you have got fatty acids so it will be like this so this is the glycerol send uh, this is the glycerol backbone to this fatty acids are attached to the third position there will be a phosphate group which is getting attached i mean this is the structure of a phosphatidic acid this is the basic glycerophospholipid you derive all the glycerophospholipids from this basic component fine okay now to this if you attach an additional compound some kind of an additional compounds gets attached for example if this is a choline then you call this as a phosphatidyl choline if this additional group happens to be ethanolamine okay then you call this as phosphatidyl ethanolamine okay if this additional group is serine then you call this phosphatidyl serine if this additional group is another glycerol then you call this phosphatidyl glycerol so in this way you name various different kinds of uh, glycerophospholipids with respect to the additional group which is getting attached to the phosphate to the phosphatidic acid which is the basic structure of a glycerophospholipid